Hi guys, welcome to another Hoi4 video. Today's video is the video that I've promised I'm gonna do like almost two years ago. And in today's video I'm gonna be playing as Azerbaijan. Of course to play as Azerbaijan I have to release myself as Azerbaijan, either starting as Soviet Union or as Iran. Bruh. But as you know with the Soviet Union the only way you can release countries is if you go for Trotsky path and that's boring. So I'm gonna play Iran. Also, I'm not gonna play Narman because I'm not getting any achievements today. Alright, so first things first, I'm gonna start building a military factory in the state of Gilan, right here. And I'm gonna exercise my army for now. Also, the first focus I'm gonna pick is political effort. After political effort, I'm gonna go for collective setos. That's why I make sure that the AI Iran doesn't go for this stupid path on the right. And let's go for partial mobilization. That way we're gonna finish building this factory way sooner. And let's now pick nationals and focus. This way, I make sure that when AI takes over Iran, they'll continue down this focus tree and not go for internationalism that way they get militarism military youth and tons of manpower which will be useful later on also i could go for army offense expert yeah let's go for him he's gonna be a bit useful all right our factory is built well i'm just gonna produce guns most importantly i'm gonna create a new template consisting of only one artillery battalion and let's put hundreds of these into training and now i'm gonna delete my entire army which consists of only three divisions another thing i'm gonna do since i got five army xp i'm gonna make a new template consisting of only one cavalry battalion. Now I can release myself as Azerbaijan. Let's go here and release nation. I'm gonna release myself as a puppet. Why the hell? If I didn't release myself as a puppet, I'd be independent in these two states and I'd be democratic, which means if I want to expand, I'd have to go for a fascist civil war. This way, I'm not aligned and I'm a puppet. Still, I have to go for the civil war in order to expand and go free, so I might as well get a free war goal on Iran without having to justify on them. This doesn't only save me time, but also political power and also world tension so I'll be able to justify one extra country. I'm gonna go with political effort focus first and I'll start by researching basic machine tools and I guess interval small airframe and bombs. By the way, I just want to show you all the things that Azerbaijan has at the start of the game. They have 936 guns, trucks, mountaineers, paratroopers even, Support companies, engineers, military police, recon company, 934 light tanks, artillery, lots of naval tech researched, even transport ships. Only thing they really lack is planes and of course industry, and they also don't have trains. We even have free research slots, and believe it or not, we even have a land doctrine. We have a mass assault at the start of the game. Also, I got one military factory, but I will not produce anything for now. Anything that I produce now will be split with my enemy in the civil war, so I better have nothing at all. Our second focus is collective setters, just like with Iran, and now I'm gonna hire a fascist demagogue. And look at this, our fascist party is called Firehorse Clique. <laughs> Let's get light MGs so we can have fighters as well. And let's prepare for civil war. Our next focus is nationalism focus. And look at this, Iran has its very first division. But guess what? These divisions, I have a template right here, they have zero orc. They literally can't fight. Well, they can slow you down a little bit. But that's all they can really do. Let's get concentrated in Industry 1, by the way. Anyway, I can start a civil war right now, but I want to finish Nationals and Focus first. Let's research civilian trains and let's go for improved machine tools. And here we are, Nationals and Focus is finished. Now I'm gonna start doing industrial effort and wait a couple of days. This way, when the civil war begins, which is gonna be in like a day or two, the enemy, Azerbaijan, which I'm in civil war with, is gonna start by doing this focus. And they'll be more inclined to do all the other industrial focuses, which will give them factories, which I'll just later take for myself, so at the end of the day, I'm getting those factories. It's good. I'm gonna do anti-democratic raids, and now I can instantly ignite it. But before I do it, I'm gonna steal some land lease from Iran. And I'm gonna do that by putting a bunch of divisions into training. They're gonna send me some guns. 513. And now I'm gonna delete these divisions, and let's just ignite the civil war. Even though I'm at war with their puppet, they're gonna keep sending me this land lease. Anyway, it's time to improve relations with Germany and with Soviet Union. I'm also gonna ask Italy for military access, and I'm gonna have a non-aggression pact with them. Also, let's cancel this focus and let's start doing militarism instead. Now I can actually start production of things, I'm gonna go for guns. I could even go for basic infantry equipment, this way I have some more guns. Anyway, it's time to start fake production of a bunch of things, and now I'm gonna land lease all of this to Republican Spain. And the next step is logical, I'm gonna steal land lease from Germany, from Italy, and of course from the Soviet Union. They're just about to get 500 guns from Iran, we just did. 
Let's put like six of these divisions into training. Let's make sure that we never send any land lease to Spain, actually. And here we are, we just got the Anarchist Civil War, which means I don't have a legal transport path with Spain for some time. Anyway, but my military is in focus. For now, I'm not going to do any other focuses because I need some political power. First thing I'm going to do with it, I'm going to go for Army Offense Specialist to get some Army XP. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hire Sheep of Air Force, but watch out, this guy on the left doesn't get you any air XP. The guy on the right, however, gets you 0.3 daily. Anyway, I'm going to use the army XP to create a light tank variant, the cheapest one possible. I'm also gonna create the cheapest possible variant of fighter and cheapest possible close air support. That means I can officially steal all of these things. Also we research trains, I'm gonna improve artillery, I'm gonna improve industry and I'm gonna go for electronic mechanical engineering. I'm gonna put trains into production, I'm gonna land lease them as well and I'm gonna steal them as well. We got 35 army experience, let's go for state service and military. And let's start justifying against some random country. I can go with Oman. Also let's start justifying on Albania. Anyway my next focus is military youth. Anyway, let's deploy our first army. I got six divisions. I'm just gonna give them a frontline order. And let's put some more of them into training, like another 18 or so. Okay, let's go for military youth now. Also, it's very important that every time you try to steal land lease, or almost every time, you look for new things. And hopefully the AI is willing to send you. For example, this time they decided to send me some support equipment. Let's get some generals. Hopefully one of them is brilliant strategist. Here we are. He's gonna be your general. And now I'm gonna go for political loyalty to get some extra stability. For now it's 6%, later on it's gonna be more. Pretty good, honestly. Yeah, look at this. Stability just went up by 8% after we finished military youth. Stability went up mostly because this guy also has a Yorchko Crusader trait. Oh yeah, by the way, our name is the Empire of Fire. <laughs> also, I'd recommend you to stop sending convoys to Spain because even if there is no legal transport path, you can send them convoys. Let's also go for radio. Anyway, we can check how many industrial focuses did our enemy do. So far, they've got two factories here because they have four building slots. At the start of the game, they had only two, so yeah, they got extra two. And Anyway, our next focus is ideological fanaticism and that's the last focus that we need in this ideological path of the focus tree because this one gets us 5% war support which is exactly how much we need to go for total mob and on top of that it also gives us ability to create factions which is another thing that we really really need in this run. At this point in the meantime you definitely could go for improved working conditions because it barely does anything and here we are Italy decided to send me military support. 2.5k guns and also 250 support equipment. Thanks a lot Italy and by the way we just got our full army of cavalry battalions. We're now ready to declare war in Iran. I mean we were ready since this day one but if we do declare war on them our war support goes down by 20% and I don't want that to happen yet because I want to go for total mobilization which is the best economy law if you didn't know. Forget about our economy total bomb is the best oh yeah austria just died which just gave us five percent to our support yeah let's go for total mob right away either way i still need ideological fanaticism to be finished if you're trying to follow this guide by the way i made one massive mistake right here i forgot to ask hungary for military access before they went fascist and since i didn't feel like restarting the run and reloading a save and recording all of that i just cheated and got it that way so yeah if you're trying to follow this guide ask them for military access don't be like me so we can now fully declare war on Iran. It doesn't even matter anymore. When it comes to the war with Iran, it's very simple. Take entirety of Iran without taking their capital. Believe me or don't, but they will not actually capitulate. However, what we will do, we will be destroying every single one of their divisions, which will get us lots of experience for this guy. Our boy is now skill two. And we finished ideological fanaticism. Let's now go for industrial effort. Anyway, we got war goal on Oman. I'm gonna delay it a little bit more. Now I can steal land lease from Japan. Amazing stuff, I know. Oh my god, I love Japan in Hoi 4, not in real life though. Just look at all the equipment they're going to send me despite literally fighting a major war. Alright, the entirety of Iran has been mopped up except for Tehran as we want it to be. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now, like six of them are gonna hold a front line against the other Azerbaijan, while another six are gonna have a front line around Tehran. Remaining 12 will be put into a new army. And I'll create a brand new template consisting of only one infantry battalion. And let's put like another 20 divisions to this training. We need, I believe, 33. So yeah, another 21. 21. Let's go for no garrisons. This way I'm gonna get all that manpower that's currently wasted on garrisons. It's gonna end up here and now I can do local police force with my cavalry template. I'll keep destroying divisions in Tehran, but I must make sure I never take it actually. Okay, I deploy these divisions. And now all 33 of them are gonna garrison only victory points in Italian core states. Also, it's time to create faction with Italy. They don't like us enough. I'm just gonna improve relations with them a little bit and we can now create faction with them. It's very important that I can kick them out of faction 
before the war goal when Albania expires. So let's go for construction 2 and concentrated 3. Anyway, let's declare war on Oman. And I will not take them out yet. Instead, I'm going to use this opportunity to call Italy to this war. Now I can go here and click Request Expeditionaries and steal every single one of their divisions. They're going to hand over entirety of their army. I'm going to take their army, put them into new army, and let's send them right here in this province, in desert. They're all going to be exercised as well. Let's go for air crew surveys. And here's the interesting part. Despite us simply calling them into the war with Oman, they joined the war against Azerbaijan and Iran. So basically they joined our civil war, even though that's not supposed to happen until 50% war tension. But it did, because hoi for my next focus is construction effort. Now let's research computing machine. For now, I'm just gonna keep requesting their troops by going here and clicking on plus. All the divisions that they deploy, I must steal them and make sure they go here. Anyway, I'm gonna take entirety of this army, except for like two divisions, and they're gonna have a fabric line exactly around these guys, like this. I'm gonna give them trucks, that way they have actual supplies. Next focus is construction effort two. Here we are, this guy is now skill four. Anyway, my justification in Albania is almost finished, and now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Let's first go for infrastructure effort, however. So. Justification is ready. First thing I want to do, however, I want to make sure that all of the Italian divisions are gone from Italy. They got nine new divisions. As long as they're not on the Italian soil itself, if they're at the sea, it's also good. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna capitulate Iran. But when I'm about to capitulate, I should slow down the game. Why am I doing this? Well, after I capitulate, so I can instantly pause it, because war tension will be up, and I don't want the UK to guarantee Albania. And if I do it just the right way, they will not be able to do it. Here we are in the peace deal. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take either this state or this state. Because, don't take this one. These two states are coastal states, and they have ports. Which means I'll be able to steal Italian navy once I take out Italy. Let's take this state. And I'm gonna puppet Iran and steal their sieves wherever I can. I'm also gonna steal their resources, which is basically just oil. Now I instantly have to pause the game. As you can see, we got five factories here. Thank you, enemy AI. I also got the new Persian Empire filled with manpower. Anyway, let me show you what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna kick Italy out of action. And I'm gonna declare war on Albania. I'm gonna start walking all of my divisions towards here. And I'm gonna take all of my planes. I'm gonna deploy them right here, although this should have been done couple of days earlier and I'm gonna give them orders to bomb the hell out of these guys right here. That way I'll be able to destroy most of the Italian army, making this guy probably even skill 5. Next thing I need to wait for exactly one hour. So here we are, one hour has passed. Italy has joined the war. Now I can choose whether I want to grab control or simply not grab control over these victory points. If I want to grab control over victory point, all I have to do is just select the division that's there and hit H, stopping them and they grab control. If I don't want, I can just select them and delete them. What I want to do here is to control as little of Italian states as possible, but actually having as many victory points as possible. How do I achieve that? I basically delete divisions in places which are quote-unquote important, basically the places which if I could take control of, I take control over the state. For example, Trento and Bolzano, despite being small victory points, are going to give me controls over the states of Trentino and Alto Adiga, respectfully. So I'm going to delete both of these divisions right here. However, I don't have to do this for every single state. I can control up to seven states without any issues whatsoever. So I choose to control the Lazio because there is Rome there, it's the biggest victory point. Also Campania because there is Napoli there, 20 victory points. Sicily, once again Palermo, 20 victory points. Now we've got 15 victory point places, and those are Taranto in Puglia, and also Milano in Lombardia. And finally we've got 10 victory point places, those are Venezia in Veneto, and Genoa in Piemonte. After this, I don't want to control any other states. How do I do this? I simply delete divisions in the important places. So let's delete divisions in Bologna, however, I will control Parma and Ferrara. Same thing, I'm gonna control Verona and Padova, because taking these promises doesn't change anything. But I will delete divisions in Trist and in Fiume. I will take Torino without any issues. However, I will delete division in Firenze and also one more of these divisions. So I'm gonna go for one in Luca. Let's delete this one. But I will grab control over La Spezia and Livorno. Ancona division will also be deleted because it gives me control over the state of Abruzzo. And I think that's it. All I need to do now is to wait for a week and basically destroy these divisions. By the way, let me show you this guy, he's now skill 4, 1% towards skill 5, and now he's skill 5, 59% towards skill 6. We just lost 0 casualties, but we inflicted half a million in Italy, so <laughs> yeah. Regno del Sud is not even gonna show up. 
It will say that there is Italian civil war, but that's not true, because cores of Regno del Sud are nowhere to be seen. And even if you transfer the territory to them, nothing changes, they don't even exist. As simple as that. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start justifying on Hungary. It's gonna take 50 days, it's much quicker than it usually would be. Another thing you can do is expand to nationalist Spain, if they're fascist, and if they get volunteers from Portugal, which they almost always do, you can even expand in Portugal, because justification is only 10 days long. So here we are in the peace deal. Now the biggest issue here is Ethiopia. However, I will try to steal as many civs as I can. I'm gonna go for Advar operations in all the places which give you lots of civs. Keep in mind that unfortunately you have to take all the states of Italy. You can't just not take it all, because then there's gonna be a second Italy, and that second Italy is gonna be your puppet. The original Italy is gonna be the one which is left in, like, Libya. So once you're done with the actual peace deal, you can start stealing some other navy. However, good luck with that, you won't be able to go far. But yeah, the rest of it goes to your puppet. As you can see, your puppet is integrated. Next thing, we are at war with Albania and with Oman, and I want to take out those two countries. You can prepare multiple naval invasions launching from the same place, and they all prepare sooner that way. Let's get formation flying. So here's the tip when actually dealing with uh, Oman, just make them leave the capital and then just take the capital. My next focus is infrastructure effort too, and justification Hungary is finished. Albania is gone, I'm gonna puppet them and steal their civs, and here goes Oman. Now I can dismantle my faction and I can join the Axis. It's time to take like 12 of these divisions and I'm gonna convert them to our actual template, which is this one. I'm gonna trim it down to 10 width, gonna give it support artillery. Let's give it also engineers. I'm gonna start with like 5 factories on artillery, 5 factories on support equipment, also 5 on trucks, 3 on tanks, that should be good enough for now. I'm gonna send my 12 divisions to the front line. Anyway, when you're ready, just start walking your troops towards a place in Hungary, delete your orders and just attack them. Also make sure you send all of your planes to Hungary. And now you'll be fighting from German territory without having to call in Germany at all. Also I recommend you to go for war industrialist at this point. And once you create the agency, also go for a loser gentleman and start improving it. Eventually you will break through into Hungary, then just have a frontline order like that and just keep on pushing. Also at this point I'm gonna give our guy trucks. So let's go for extra resource slot finally. Oh yeah, since we're running out of manpower, let's get some of it. I'm gonna show you a bug which I previously mentioned on my channel. Find a puppet which has manpower, and that's Iran, they have 600,000. Let me give them back their own state so they have even more. So what I need to do is to go to the templates here, I need to find a template which is close to 10 width, I mean 20 width infantry. Okay, this one's pretty close. Let's edit it and let's make it 20 width infantry. I have to have a template which is only one battalion, I have it right here, so let me do this. I'm gonna put 10 of these into training. Let's deploy them right here, put them into new army. Let's convert them to my own template real quick. And now I inherit all the Iranian manpower that was there. So once again I have to turn it back, thank you Italy, turn it back into the Iranian one. Now it takes away Iranian manpower once again. And now I turn it back to my own. And here we are, like two weeks later. Iran now has zero manpower and we have all the manpower that they had. We have 700,000. I can delete these divisions as well. Let's go for extra resource slot 2 and I guess I'm gonna start researching planes. Let's go for basic small airframe and engines 1. And let's start building up into network in like Armenia or something like that. Funny enough, we can't do it in Azerbaijan, but we can do it everywhere else in the Caucasus. All we're gonna do now is simply take Budapest and Petsch. We did it, that's it, end of the war, and we got this thick puppet Hungary all for ourselves. We can even make a Czechoslovakia, should I do it? Nah, I won't do that. However, I will steal all of their resources, that's gonna be tons of aluminum and a little bit of steel as well. Ah yes, Azerbaijani Hungary, and we got anti-air, let's produce some of it, like five factories for now. And let's go for dive bombing. Also, I'll be switching out the mass assault for superior firepower. I don't know, for me, mass assault feels like a massive letdown. And boy, do I love these undeletable puppet divisions that I can't do anything about. The best thing about A4. It's time to make an actual army. I'm gonna convert all of these guys to the main template right here. Let's put like another 13 into training, so that way I have exactly enough to have two armies. And here we are, extra research slot 2. Let's go for construction effort 2. I'm gonna go for heavy machine guns. Engine to I'm gonna prepare collaboration government and I'm also gonna rescue this operative and here we are World War II also let's 
modify this template. I'm gonna go for 20 with infantry. Let's get secret weapons and the direct ground support. Perhaps if I leave their faction real quick, they will be more concentrated on fighting. Let's go for survivability studies. Netherlands is gone. Belgium is also gone. Now I'm gonna join back their faction. Let's get rocket artillery and let's prepare the very first collaboration government in the Soviet Union. What? They just created Vichy France before these guys even capitulated. <laughs> Well, let's start justifying on them then. Greece is justifying on Albania. Though he's suicidal who for AI moment. I'm gonna go for army effort now so I can get some cheaper land doctrines. Also, this guy, I will promote him to field marshal, but I will use him as a general. This way I can go for offensive doctrine and I can make him army offense expert. Let's fire this guy and let's hire him. He's gonna get me more daily army XP. Let's go for engines free. And I guess I'm gonna go for light air company. Honestly, now when I think of it, what I can do is order 66 Greece. Actually make them do it themselves. Let's go for doctrine effort. Agent forced into hiding. I don't care. We got 30% collaboration government. Let's improve worker conditions. They have 70 divisions as Vichy France. They sometimes have just like 20 or something. What the hell? I guess that's what happens when they get created before Free France actually capitulates. Time to attack Vichy France as the clairvoyant on them. I have no idea why, but my Italian divisions are not listening to me. Are you standing there still? Oh my goodness. They just won't listen to me. What the hell? Right, whatever. I'm gonna call it Toy to War. Also, not forget to use my planes here. Let's get the lay. Doctrine effort 2 is next. Now it's time to start making some actual planes. Improved small airframe. 8 heavy machine guns. And let's go for rocket rails. Also engine 3. self sealing fuel tanks and some armor plates. I guess 15 factories of these is gonna be good enough for now. Also, let's give our garrison divisions military police. I'm also gonna start production of towed rocket artillery. Like 5 factories for now. I don't know what else to pick. I guess I'm gonna go for naval effort. Oh, this is beautiful. You gotta be kidding me. Greece is justifying on me again. <laughs> They just don't know, they have an identity crisis right now. Let's get integrated support and also mobile defense. Alright, finally, that's it, we capitulated them. Well, I'm gonna try to steal as many of their sieves as I can, the typical strat. I'm simply gonna puppet them everywhere. However, I will take into China for myself because I don't want Japan to steal it. I'm also gonna steal their entire navy. You gotta be kidding me, I can't request anything else. These buttons are all locked out, oh my god. This peace deal system is just horrible. Look at this. I wanted to now steal their resource rights, so I have actual aluminum and steel, but nope. I can't do it. This is why I prefer not playing on arm, and let me just load back. If somebody says that I'm cheating, you're a Redditor. I'll be taking resource rights here, so I have some rubber. Hell, I could do it here as well. We should have enough rubber now. Alright, so next thing we're gonna do is take out the UK. I'm gonna send my entire navy up here. Let's rush transport ships. I mean, land and craft, you already got transport ships. And I'm gonna send my entire first army here and the second army here. Also, it's time to focus on as much as possible on the plane production. Because in a couple of months I will not be able to do it anymore. All these focuses are useless now. Let's go for air production. Let's select this army and I'm gonna give them a naval invasion order from Dunkirk to right here. However, I'm gonna do basically two exact same naval invasions. That way they prepare for only 35 days and not 70 days. My navy is here. I have to make sure that all of their orders are deleted and that they are merged. Anyway, we'll prepare the second collaboration army with the Soviet Union. Let's go for the third one. One funny thing. All this time I'm not actually using 20 with infantry, I'm using 16 with because I didn't have enough army XP and I forgot to make it 20 with. So let's finally make it 20 with. And I think we're ready. Let's declare war on the UK, or well, let's join the war. Please tell me we have enough naval dominance. I literally can't have enough naval dominance. Well, too bad, I'm gonna deploy my entire air force right here. Oh wait, we did make a naval invasion. Alright, then let's support our guys. Maybe just walk into the London like this, might as well do it. Let's send our entire army here and let's destroy these divisions in that war. And let's just push the Yugoslavia and Azerbaijan. <laughs> let's send both of the armies here and let's just go. Jafar Hamidlinski wounded. I really wonder how did he get wounded in this very hospitable place with absolutely no attrition whatsoever. Our depth just doubled because we took Birmingham. Oh my god, you know it's late game when you're not researching anything. Nice encirclement in Wales. Also, one really stupid thing in Bible alone, honestly. They renamed this entire strategic region to just Tripoli. That doesn't make sense. There's Tripoli is right here. 
This is Cyrenaica, this isn't Tripolitania, that doesn't make sense at all. Imagine if entire Britain was a strategic region and called just London. Currently we got 22% war participation, you know what I could actually do? It's too late now. I could fall back and like fight them again. <laughs> no point in doing that however, because here we are in the Allied Peace Deal. Confirm an exit. I swear to god my game's gonna crash now, I swear. Yep, it did. So yeah, there is a problem in this game, which I did notice after playing Azerbaijan and a couple other countries. Please, Paradox, fix your damn game. Basically, when you puppet Britain as some countries, the game just crashes. You can't puppet them. Unless there are like a breakaway tag. But if you do that, then the ownership switches to the other Britain and they lose like half of their industry. They just lose it because, yeah, holy four. So what you can do is either not do anything about Britain puppet them and have a puppet which is weak and loses half of its industry or simply annex them. So yeah, forget about puppeting the UK, you have to fully annex them or just forget about them. I wish Paradox spent more time fixing this game than making the seventh balance of power that's broken in the next DLC. Alright, so here's our peace deal, there is a lot of mess here. I took some stuff that has rubber, which I need for my planes. Now we're going to the Goliath of this video and that's gonna be the Soviet Union. So let me pro my infantry template a little bit. And I'm gonna slap some support artillery and rocket artillery on top. Once again I lack manpower, so let's go for extensive description. I'm gonna put one more army into training, however. Wait, I'm at war with Ethiopia. Oh yeah, they decided to just randomly go for African Union and they are now pained in the app. So I'm just gonna go to Djibouti and take them out. Who's justifying with me? Please don't tell me it's Greece again. Yeah, they're justifying for a third time. <laughs> yeah, look at the Ethiopian Empire that we have right here. Oh my god. Alright, it's time to start justifying on these guys. Only 60 days to retake the core state, because keep in mind, Azerbaijan is my core state. Also, I will maximize my airports here, and I guess also here. Lack of supply hubs here is a major issue. I could actually build like two supply hubs here. Also, let's deploy our third army. Also, let's get army logistics expert. Hopefully, he helps us out a little bit with this supply situation. Germany is about to attack Soviet Union, but I gotta make sure that I do it first, otherwise I'm gonna lose all those collaboration government benefits. So, let's deploy a bunch of planes right here. And we got our supply hubs. So let's look Clear barn Soviet Union and Jeremy declared barn them as well. What the hell is happening with my game? Also, let's call in Iran. We took Georgia and Armenia. Now we just need to take Sukumi and we'll be able to create our Trans Caucasian Federation. Prove the worker conditions because that's, yeah, that's what you do in the war. We got Sukumi, which means we can now recreate the Trans Caucasian Federation. We can instantly reunite the Azari diaspora because we already have that since the start of the game. And now we can start doing all these other decisions. Let's integrate the Northern Caucasus, now we core it all. Next up, let's justify on Turkey, which luckily doesn't have Ismet in Nonu, otherwise it would take like 9 months to justify. And let's put 4th army into training. Oh my god, yes! 9 divisions here, destroyed. And we took Astrakhan, which means I can now restore the Kalmyk Khanat, which gets core on Astrakhan, even though it usually doesn't have it. And <laughs> they randomly get to encircle the Soviet Union. It's called Great Horde and their leader is... I don't know. I'm not gonna comment on any of this. Also these guys get seven divisions out of thin air. Justification on Turkey is done. Let's deploy the army. Alright, let's attack Turkey. It's also still super weird how almost entire Turkey is just one strategic region. While well, they split up like Siberia into 20 strategic regions. Just look at this. Let's take Crimea and now we can restore the Crimean Khanate. Funny how I must not be communist or democratic to do this. So yeah, it makes sense because it's Khanate. As far as I remember, they didn't get this state, but now they do. Yeah, that's cool, I guess. They also get like random 8 divisions. Another thing I can do, claim Anatolia. This gives me another two cores, I think, on these two states. Yes. And I can also do subjugate Anatolian Kurds, but I'm gonna do that one once I capitulate Turkey. That's it. Venezuela has joined the Axis because Turkey has fell. They were scared of Turkey, but now they joined. Okay, so they capitulated, so now I'm gonna subjugate Anatolian Kurds. And watch this, they actually get this state as well. And they core it. They actually don't core the state at the start of the game, they only have a claim there. But yeah, now we got very weird looking Kurdistan. They also got 8 divisions. Oh, by the way, I noticed something. I prepared collaboration government for nothing. Because I declared war on the Soviets just one day before the Germany, and yeah, the collaboration governments are not registered for one full day. 
If I'd done it one day earlier, they would be on brink of capitulation right now. But yeah, way for. So now I have to build supply hubs in middle of nowhere. To push them out of middle of nowhere, the Unitary Canada joined Axis. What they were waiting for until now. Oh my god, look at this. Which one joined actually? Come on, be enough. It should be enough. It's not enough. It's never enough. Never mind, it is. Nice. So it union is gone. So here's the peace deal. I made a great horde greater and then we got new Mongol Empire right here. I gave something to Iran. I gave something to Kurdistan. We got two turkeys, one in Izmir, one in Afyon. And yeah, I gave some land to Crimean Khanate, which they probably can't even garrison. Everything else was stolen by Germany, of course. I guess that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, share and subscribe. Also, it's funny how Gaziantep is a capital of Kurdistan. <laughs> See you in the next video and goodbye. Oh my god, finally.